Big Trinidad, we're back with you again. There's a pressing issue that I saw in the Trinidad Express I think I need to talk to you about. And I'm going to back Kamala on this one. There will be no retraction or apology from opposition leader Kamala Lissasse over her jab comment. On Thursday, Dial Singh issued a release condemning Mrs. Sir for saying at a UNC meeting that jab were fake and they were distributed to hundreds of thousands of people during the pandemic and he called on her to retract the statement. Now, there's an MP, Ragbear, who's a medical doctor. He stated that while it's Mrs. Sir's right to criticize government policies, those criticisms must be grounded in facts, reason, and logic. So we look at facts, reason, and logic. The development of effective health policy requires honesty and adherence to scientific truth, not political maneuvering. So we look at the scientific truth as well. He said the jabs distributed to the people of Trinidad and Tobago were rigorously tested when and where and certified as by international health organizations, including the WHO, who nobody trusts anymore, and PAHO, which has gotten a bad rap. Of course, rugby colleague, former government minister, Tim Gupshen, who is also a doctor, has defended Mr. Sir's comments while pointing out that there were successful lawsuits against both Pfizer and Moderna with respect to the efficacy of these jabs. So you get the gist of what was in the Trinidad Express. So number one, there will be no apology, and that is fine. She has no right to apologize for anything. Let's look at this article from CNN. It says, Norway reviewing debts of frail and elderly jabbed against the pandemic. All right. So Norway is reviewing debts of frail and elderly patients who are jabinated during the pandemic. Let's get to the second part of that article. Doctors in Norway are investigating the debts of 23 elderly patients who had received the Pfizer-BioNTech jab looking into the possibility that adverse reactions to the jab may have contributed to fatal outcome in some frail patients. The jab side effects are rare and usually mild, that's what they're saying, but they could include fever and nausea, which could be dangerous in very ill and frail patients. So basically what they're admitting here too is that the jabs exploded inside of the elderly persons, and that's why they died. Let's get on. It's just so funny that when the pandemic was up and running, Dial Singh was on the television every evening talking about how many persons were sick, how many were in the hospital, how many were dying. I'm not sure, Trinidad, if they're telling you about the deaths now, the numbers, that the sickness people are encountering. You got to leave your comments in the section below so I can know what's happening down there. But let's continue with this one. The link between J&J's jab and blood clots, what you need to know. So here we go again. And it says information in this article was accurate at the time of origin. It's from Yale Medicine. Of course, Yale is one of the most brilliant universities in the world. You can't get it better than Yale. So let's continue to see what they said. Concerns has continued to grow over a small but growing number of cases of a rare but serious blood clotting disorders associated with J and J jabs. In May, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, put in new restrictions on who can get the jab based on fresh review of data on life-threatening blood clots that have been associated with the jab. This was five months after the CDC endorsed a decision to give preferential recommendations to Pfizer and Moderna. The latest decision restricts access of the jab to adults 18 and older who specifically request the J&J shot or who cannot have the other available jabs for medical reasons. So you see what we're talking about here. So when she says that it was poison and it's affecting people, she has no right to apologize for it. I'm not sure if the health officials in Trinidad or in any other Caribbean countries are telling you about these things now. They were updating us daily during the pandemic and they should come back and tell us about this now. Pfizer accused of bringing discredit on industry with unnecessary jabs all right let's continue with this one it says pharmaceutical watchdog pmcpa found that the pharma giant promoted unlicensed medicines and violated its regulatory code five times back in 2020 dr berkeley phillips medical director 
at Pfizer retweeted a post on X from a U.S. employee which stated, our jab candidate is 95% effective in preventing, you know, and 94% effective in people over 65 years old. We will file all of our data with health authorities within days. Thank you to our every volunteer in the trial and to all who are tirelessly flight, fighting this pandemic. The post was also reshared by four other UK employees at the company. However, the PMCPA ruled that the post had limited information about the jab's efficacy, no reference to adverse events, and no safety information. Therefore, the message resulted in an unlicensed medicine being proactively disseminated on Twitter to help professions and members of the public in the UK, the regulatory body said. As a result of the misjudged tweets, Pfizer was charged £34,000 in administrative cost. So there is no way Kamala should actually apologize for anything. And she has all of the information to back up what she was saying. Whether the job was fake, it was poison, she has a right to say what she has to say. The information is out there and the other thing should actually come back to the public and give the public this information. The Attorney General in Texas, Ken Paxton, sues Pfizer for misrepresenting the jab efficacy and conspiracy to censor public opinions. Remember during the pandemic, you couldn't say anything. If you put it on Facebook, it was taken down. If you put it on certain other platforms, it would just, just de-platform you and all that stuff. Well, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has sued Pfizer for unlawfully misrepresenting the effectiveness of the company's jab and attempting to censor public discussion on the product. Pfizer engaged in false, deceptive, and misleading acts and practices by making unsupported claims regarding the company's jab in violation of Texas Deceptive Trade Practices Act. So there you go again. Kamala has one more, one more in her arsenal. All right, for the Alsing. He's just disgusting, and he really, really should really come back to the public and give you all of this information now. AstraZeneca admits its jab can cause rare side effects in court documents for the first time. Pharmaceutical giant being sued in class action over claims its jab caused death and serious injury in dozens of patients. And it says of the Telegraph newspaper, AstraZeneca has admitted for the first time in court documents that its jab can cause a rare side effect in an apparent about turn that could pave the way for multi-million pound legal payout. The pharmaceutical giant is being sued over claims that its jab developed at the University of Oxford caused death and serious injury in dozens of cases. Lawyers argue that the jab produced a side effect which has a devastating effect on people. The first case was lodged by Jamie Scott. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what happened there. A father of two who was left with a permanent brain injury after developing the blood clot and a bleed on the brain that has prevented him from working after he received the jab in April, 2021. The hospital called his wife three times to tell her that her husband was going to die. D.L. Singh should be the one apologizing to Trinidad and explaining to you all about these new science that is out that they're not telling anyone about. Remember, they followed the science, but here's what the science is saying now. That these jobs were just technically poisoned, worthless, not effective, not effective. Remember Dr. Fauci, the main man, remember he said that six feet apart and then he came back in a testimony on capitol hill to say that was just a made-up thing it never worked in the first place to begin with so maybe dl singh should really come out and tell the trinidad public about all this information gave you this information he really has an obligation as the minister of health who was the main man the main spokesperson at the forefront of the pandemic telling you all about who was dying all about who was in the hospital and how safe and effective these poisons were they should really come out now and tell you he should be the one apologizing to trinidadians but you can leave your comments in the section below and let me know what's taking place and if you want to whatsapp me with any kind of information you can do so with the number provided on the screen as well all right take it easy until next time remember to like share subscribe to the channel